Hi diddly ho. My name's Ned Shout. Shout it out. And today we're going to talk about fatherhood because fatherhood is very important and it's super duper cool. We all have expectations of what a father's supposed to look like, influenced by our stories, the culture, and the media. And today we're going to go ahead and rebel against all those expectations. I was 22 years old when I had my first kid. My wife Sarah and I had only been married a year and a half. We show up to the hospital in the middle of the night, of course, on a Friday in March 2006. I thought, I'm ready for this. No. And at 4:40 a.m., my little girl Brooklyn was born. The doctor handed her to me, and in an overwhelming moment, I took her in my arms, my eyes welling with tears. I announced to my wife, "We have a girl." Brooklyn was born to a 22-year-old dad, dressed like a skater, wearing a backwards hat. Yep, that's right, a backwards hat during the delivery of my firstborn. I'm pretty sure those nurses had low expectations for me as a new dad. <laughs> It is time we embrace fatherhood. It is time for fathers to embrace who they are. Nothing matters more for the stability of our world. Together we must rebel against the low expectations for fatherhood and create a world where fathers show up for those that have been placed in their care. I believe the world would look and feel a whole lot different if the men who found themselves on the adventure of fatherhood discovered how their role would fulfill their lives and their families. We must stop pretending like the role of the father is not that significant. As a child, you know your father has influence on you. It can be, "Yay, dad's home from work." Or it can be, "Oh no, no, dad's coming home." Or it can be, "Hey, mom, is dad coming home?" But if our relationship with our father wasn't good, we act like it doesn't matter. But it does. As moms, you know the role of the father is crucial for your kids. but you may have low expectations and then because your mom's and you're awesome obviously you end up doing his role for him hoping that it doesn't matter but it does dads we have an opportunity to change the world but first we must know who we are i discovered the truth about my role as a father in 2015 I was 32, a passionate leader in the community, a husband and a father to five kids. My discovery came through an identity crisis. You see, from an early age, my identity had been built around this idea that my life had a significant and unique purpose. I was special. And my only desire was to figure out what that purpose was. At the age of 18, I decided my purpose is to build a youth center, something the world has never seen. It will be raw, it will be real, and it will build the next generation of young leaders to change the world. So that's what I dedicated my life to. Fast forward to 2015, and my vision to fulfill my purpose was becoming a reality. I had created a nonprofit called New Era Youth Community. I had great relationships with local middle and high school students and the administration. I had student-led clubs running on the campuses. And to top it off, I had negotiated a deal to take over a skateboard park that was half the size of a football field. It had skate ramps, a stage for bands, a snack shop, a skate shop and an arcade. It was incredible. I had finally done it. I was finally going to be Ned, the guy who created and ran that epic youth center in Northern California. I'd made it. And then it didn't work out. It was over. I was devastated and lost, unsure of who I was, not knowing what my purpose was. I mean, what was I doing that provided me value now? Nothing. Have you ever felt that way, lost, unsure of your purpose? Now as a man I know that my deepest desires are to be respected, valued, needed, loved, and know that I'm leaving a mark on this world. But I had primarily been looking for those desires to be filled in what I was building outside of my home. 
I realized something that year when all was stripped away and I had more time and energy to put into my wife and kids, I found that those desires I had were being filled in my role as a father. And the more I embraced that role, the more fulfillment I had, I found that my family's sense of joy and happiness was increasing as well. Now that I discovered my primary purpose in life was to be a father, I had to rebel. Rebel against that constant pull to find my identity and purpose out in the world while being a mediocre dad inside my home. Now, during those early years of fatherhood, my wife would tell you I was a good dad, but I knew I didn't give my best time, energy, and creativity. Now the expectation I had for myself and for dads everywhere elevated. Isn't it crazy the pats on the back will give a dad for doing the most minimal job? Think about it. If you see a dad on a walk with his kid or playing at the park with his kid or taking his kid to school, we go, oh my God, what a great dad and what a lucky kid. If we see a mom do the same thing, we probably wouldn't notice. We might criticize her or we would just say, that's her job. As my passion grew to rebel against the low expectations for fatherhood, I realized I've really always been drawn to rebellion. I just didn't always know how to channel it. Like when I was five years old, I rebelled against my own name. For a whole year, I would only respond to my parents if they referred to me as Rambo. <laughs> this is embarrassing, but one day, I'm standing in the bathroom at the, kitchen, or at the bathroom sink, and I'm having an argument with my mom. I'm in high school. Down the hall, I can see her sitting at the kitchen table. When she looks down, I just give her the middle finger for some internal rebellious relief. Felt good until uh, my gentle hippie dad walked past the door. And in this particular moment, he wasn't such a gentle hippie. I could still see the look on his face and he could probably still see the surprise on mine. He calmly and swiftly had me up against the wall and let me know I would not treat his wife or my mother that way. I love to rebel, but my father was there to guide me in understanding my strength as a young man to rebel. Bell is short for the Latin word bellum, which means war, and re means to do it again. To rebel is to never accept the status quo expectations. Dads, if you're not satisfied with the man in the mirror, with the father that you are, the war isn't over. You get to go to battle every single day. The expectations are not set in stone. Now, this is not about being the perfect dad, but about progress, making fatherhood your life long craft. And if you're thinking, mm, Ned, I've messed up. I've not been a good dad. Okay, I hear you. But you are a warrior. You are a fighter and you are a rebel. And innately, you are the provider and protector. And it's time to get up and rebel because your fatherhood role is critical for our world. There's a story of the very first father. He was given the secrets of life. He was shown how to bring life and avoid death. And the only requirement was that he show the way to those that were placed in his care. He was like the old wise tribe leader. He knew the right trails to take, which animals were dangerous and which plants were safe to eat. But as the tale goes, his family was led down a trail that wasn't safe. But he stood back. He stayed silent, missing his opportunity to guide them. How many fathers today still stay silent, missing their opportunity to guide? The role of the father is to guide, serve, provide, and protect. The statistics in the U.S. alone are staggering when a father isn't present. Our children are two times more likely to drop out of high school, seven times more likely to get pregnant as a teen. 85% of our children with behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. 90% of our homeless and runaway kids come from fatherless homes. 63% of youth suicides and 85% of youth in prison come from fatherless homes. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, there are 20 million children in America without a father in the home. That's one in four, 25%. And we could feel it. That doesn't feel right. That is so, so sad for those kids without a dad around. And it is. But what about the three and four who have a dad around? How often is that father silent? How often does he miss or misuse his fatherhood role? 
One day, my son Brody, six years old, pushing my buttons. I don't even remember what for, but we're standing in his room, and I had just had it. I was done. I got right in his face, and I said, stop and get in your bed. Sweet little chunky six-year-old face drops his head, starts to cry, turns and goes and crawls in his bed. I came out. I sat down on the couch. I'm like, dude, why did you talk to your son like that just now? Not too long after, I had a situation with my daughter, Violet. She was seven. She lied to me about brushing her teeth. Probably been there, parents. Yeah. We're going round and round, getting nowhere. I'm smelling her breath, the whole deal. <laughs> and I'm starting to get frustrated. I'm starting to puff up, and I can tell she's going to cry from my sternness. I take a deep breath. I get down eye level with her. I say, Violet, you're part of this family. You brushing your teeth isn't the problem. You lying to me is. We're a family, and families need to trust each other. Families don't lie to each other. I saw a physical change in her face. She leaped into my arms, and she said, Daddy, I'm so sorry. I love you. Now, both of those fathers are inside of me. One builds a culture of fear, dishonesty, and frustration. The other leads to trust, stability, and joy. As fathers, it is our opportunity which one we create in our home. And this is not a one-time decision. I wish that it was. But it's a daily moving towards the one I want to be and when I find myself acting like the other, pausing and reminding myself who I am. The day I misused my strength with my son, I went to him and I said, buddy, I'm so sorry I treated you that way. I'm so sorry I spoke to you that way. What you did wasn't okay, but I should never treat you like that. Over the centuries, fatherhood has embraced that power role of I'm the provider and the protector, which is true and important and good, but we must understand what it means. Providing is not limited to food, water, and shelter. A father's role is to provide a safe place to grow, a stable home, opportunities to ask questions, and to test life. Protecting is not limited to knowing how to fight, four walls in a nice neighborhood, or even having good aim. A father's role is to protect their family's heart, their mind, their soul. Through providing and protecting, a father is fulfilling an innate purpose in his life, and he's preparing his children to one day go do the same because they'll be parents, they'll have families. There's a story of a father who deeply loved his son, and it was time for his son to leave the home and go out into the world on his own journey. So the father decided, I'm going to hold a ceremony for my son. He had his son at center of attention, and he gathered all the friends and family around. The ceremony consisted of three things. First, the father said, he proclaimed, this is my son. With his words, he let him know, you're part of this family. You belong. No matter where you go, you're still connected to us. Second, the father said, mm. <laughs> I love you so much. Letting his son know he didn't belong to the family out of some obligation. He was wanted. And third, the father said, I am so, so pleased with you. Letting his son know you're ready, you have what it takes, and I'm proud of you. As fathers, we must understand that we have a significant influence on how our children see themselves. And sometimes I think it's easier to understand when we remember we're all children. We have parents, we have a dad. I want these things from my dad to know that I belong, that I'm wanted, that I have what it takes. As a father myself, I have the power to help my four daughters feel validated 
and know what it means to be seen, to be noticed, and to be loved. I have the power to show my son how to use his strength, his skills, and his love. I have the power to one day speak life into my grandchildren and maybe even my great-grandchildren. Fathers, you and I are connected. My kids may one day marry your kids. So how we choose to live and embrace our fatherhood role will impact each other's future family lines for generations. Together, we must rebel against the low expectations for fatherhood and create a world where fathers know who they are, regardless of if they're the skater dad or the nerdy dad or the sports dad or the outdoor dad. It doesn't matter as long as you are showing up as your authentic self for those that have been placed in your care. As you discover and embrace your innate purpose and identity in your role as a father, you will change the world. It is time for you to rebel and create. Thank you.